Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with another Talk of the Hawk video here on the Hawking Regime channel. Today, we are doing a post-game analysis video of the Seattle Seahawks Minnesota uh, Seattle Seahawks 38-7 victory over the Minnesota Vikings in, I believe, week 13 of the uh, NFL season in Minnesota. And uh, usually the way I like to go through these post-season, uh, post-game uh videos is I like to talk about the positives of the game, the negatives of the game, uh, the MVP of the game in the perspective of the Seattle Seahawks, and takeaways, things that we can learn and, and you know move on into the next upcoming weeks of the NFL. So starting out with the positives of the game, Russell Wilson had another unbelievable week. And over the last two weeks, he's thrown for eight touchdown passes, and today also had uh, a huge factor in the run game, as he always is when we win games, usually. Um, nine carries for 51 yards, 5.7 yards per rush a touchdown you see 21 of 27 on the day for 274 yards and three touchdowns only one sack given up also a sack by Tavares Jackson but um just an absolutely phenomenal day uh, 146 point uh, quarterback passer rating unbelievable man it was just an absolutely monster day uh, on the ground you know rushing for 173 total yards is extremely impressive on our part Russell even had like a 51 yard rushing touchdown that was actually uh, omitted because of a holding call uh, and immediately after that play, you know, Doug Baldwin got a touchdown. And it was just like Doug Baldwin, again, having a big day. Five receptions, 94 yards, two touchdown catches, five touchdowns over the last two weeks again. Um, or five touchdowns over the last two weeks for Doug Baldwin. Lockett had a big day, converted a lot of times on third down conversions, and was playing really well. Even guys like Fred Jackson, you know, he got a touchdown on the board in the late. And I don't think, I think it was the second half, I believe. Um a little dump off play, but he was getting some first downs. Uh, it, just everybody, it just a total team effort. The defense was unbelievable today. A huge, severe improvement uh, from last week, especially in terms of pass rush. You see the four sacks: Michael Bennett with one, Bruce with one, and Frank Clark with two. The, the pressure on Teddy Bridgewater today when they were forced to pass the football, they had no idea what to do. That it was as simple as that. When we shut down Adrian Peterson. Probably the best running back in the NFL at the moment to 18 yards, 2.3 yards a carry. I mean, that's a tough task. And Seattle was up to the uh, was up to it, man. I I believed in the beginning of the game, um, uh, or in the not in the beginning of the game in my pregame analysis video. I said that I believe this is the game where the Seahawks will separate themselves and uh, you know be able to expose some of the injuries of the secondary. And that's literally what happened. I don't think I exactly said that they'd be able to expose guys like Harrison Smith and Anthony Barr because I thought they were going to play. But a lot of the game, and I don't even know if Anthony Barr actually ever played, but I know Harrison Smith, after like one of the first or second defensive series for the Vikings, actually left uh, the game and didn't play for them again. So defensively, injuries on Minnesota is huge. But even if they had all their guys, Seattle had such great protection. I really don't think it would have made an impact, to be honest with you. I think the game might have been a little bit closer, but I still absolutely know that the Seahawks would have won this game. And it doesn't matter, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. It doesn't really matter. The Seahawks won the game. They absolutely blew out the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. So just a huge statement on the NFL that the Seahawks are, are ready to play and ready to compete once again, as they have the past couple years, making it to back-to-back -back Super Bowls. And once again this year, they are a Super Bowl contender. I really don't care what spot they make in the playoffs. I just want them to get in the playoffs. And I think that's what the mindset should be of any Seattle Seahawk, uh, you know, member of the team or fan. You know, if you get it, if you get there, you know, that's all that really matters. But moving on to the negatives of the game. Um, one of the only big negatives of the game really was that they had a punt return or a kick return touchdown. So special teams was has been a little bit shaky over the past couple of weeks. We did actually end up missing a, uh, a PAT last week against the Steelers. And we had some blocks. We had a, a PAT blocked a couple times, I believe, against the Niners. So a special teams a little bit shaky. Um, giving up that kick return to Cordero Patterson. You know, granted, it is Cordero Patterson, so you have to give some credit where credit's due. A great return, man. But, uh, you know, penalties on the day are a little bit of a concern as well. Always, you know, offensive line penalty issues. You know, they can, they can put you in horrible situations. But other than that, I mean, everybody was really on point today. I mean, offensively, it was really, really difficult to stop the Seattle Seahawks, especially with the time. I was really impressed with the offensive line. But uh, moving on to the... MVP of the game. I mean, in my eyes, it's just it's Russell Wilson, man. I mean, he played such a great game, scoring, accounting for four total touchdowns on the offense, and being able to escape pressure and make plays on the run 
it's just so fun to watch him play. And the, the best part of it was that a lot of his plays weren't necessarily on the run or on the move. A lot of them were, but sometimes he was able to step into the pocket and just make the great throw. Uh, actually, after the interception by Earl Thomas right here, as you'll see, um, Earl Thomas, that 25-yard return, uh, immediately after that, they dropped back five wide. And I was uh, kind of wondering, like, why aren't we running the football right now to at least make it uh, a three-possession game? We were out 14 at the time. But immediately, Russell throws a strike across the middle for at least a 20-yard touchdown grab to Doug Baldwin. So, I mean, that type of confidence in your quarterback is unbelievable. And the, the chemistry and the experience that the Seahawks have is pretty impressive. And it's starting to show, you know, they're starting to play better. Uh, obviously beating a team who that's eight and three at their home and beating them in outstanding fashion uh, at that is extremely impressive and it's a great statement towards the NFL so that's always a positive um so I had to give the MVP of the game to Russell Wilson just played a great game only six incompletions on the day you know only took one sack and just played extremely effectively man um kind of takeaways for this game Seattle will move to seven and five on the year the Cardinals will move to ten and two so Really unlikely that we're going to probably be able to catch Arizona. I mean, if Arizona starts losing games, there's a possibility, but they don't seem to be really um, losing to teams at, at all. So they're like a six-game win streak or something like that. So it's going to be very difficult to catch them, and Panthers are pretty much uncatchable at this point. All that really matters is for the Seahawks to make the playoffs. If we continue to win games, we will make the playoffs. The Atlanta Falcons actually did lose, so they moved to 6-6 six and six on the year. Um, I don't know if we can look at the playoff position now. I don't know if they've updated everything, but... Uh, standing at seven and five, the Seahawks are in prime position to take a wild card spot. So um, obviously, it's unfortunate that the Packers did end up winning that game on Thursday night uh, as they moved to like eight and four and win and, and are leading that NFC North division. But the Seahawks, man, all we really care about now is to continue to play well, um, continue you know ground and pound on offense, play solid defense, uh, let Russell do what Russell does. You know the, the pass protection has been unbelievable, man. I can't believe how much time Russell's had back there. And the best part of it is, is he's not like overthrowing a lot of guys. I think maybe one or two overthrows at all today, but it was really on the money. So he's really improved as a passer. And the more time you get as a quarterback and the more effective your offense gets with the type of talent we have on defense and the fact that we know we can play defense, it's going to be very difficult to stop us in this late run, especially given the fact that Russell is even more effective in December. I believe his all-time record now is like 13-2 and two in December. So hopefully that success continues. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Madden NFL 16 content, as well as things like this, man. I always do a pregame and postgame analysis video of a Seattle Seahawks, whether it's the preseason, the regular season, or the postseason. Once again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And yep, thanks for watching.